Hey this is Sri Hari from Mr Phone and as you might know Realme just dropped the all new Realme 3 Pro and we've already put up a long detailed full review so if you haven't watched that video yet finish this video and go ahead and watch that one we we'll link that in the description below and in a card here That said, in this video, we are actually going to take a deeper look at the cameras. The Realme 3 Pro has a dual camera setup at the back, and what better way to analyze a smartphone camera than comparing it to its peers? So, in this video, we're going to compare the Realme 3 Pro with the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy A50. So, without any further ado, let's jump right in. Before we jump into the video hit the bell icon so that you get notified for all the new videos that we put out. Where's the bell icon? Well, you'll find that once you hit the subscribe button. So also do that. Hit the subscribe button and also hit the bell icon that comes next. The first set of images we analyze are the close-up pictures taken in broad daylight. We were lucky enough to find this vibrant sunflower and here's what the three cameras produced. Starting with the Redmi Note 7 Pro The produce is really good. That said, colors look slightly on the saturated side, and there are these orange shades uh, where the petals start that were not there on the flower. It also carries this slightly warm tone, which you might like, but I'm not a big fan of it. Now we take a look at the Realme 3 Pro's image, and what we find is that this one has clicked such a natural-looking image. The yellow colors are near perfect, and the color temperature also seems quite neutral. The Samsung Galaxy A50 goes the Redmi Note 7 route, but still manages to stay slightly less saturated than the Redmi. Now cropping in at 100%, the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro are crisp compared to the Samsung Galaxy. A50. A50 is not bad, but yeah, that's what it is. The Redmi Note 7 Pro does look slightly more crisp in comparison, just slightly. But since the difference is so small and it's enough to be unnoticeable, and since the Realme 3 Pro produced the most pleasing colors, I'm going to give this one and the first round of this camera comparison to the Realme 3 Pro. Now, just to be sure, we took a look at another close-up shot here. And right off the bat, the tones on the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro look really good in comparison to the Samsung Galaxy A50. That said, the Realme 3 Pro is slightly on the warmer side, and the A50 is too much on the cooler side. The Redmi Note 7 Pro actually has near perfect color temperature. At a 100% crop, though, the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro has similar looking details. The A50 is soft in comparison. Between the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro, the 7 Pro seems to have slightly more natural details, which also brings the separation between these smaller. elements and for the second day like close up shot i choose the redmi note 7 pro followed by the realme 3 pro and the samsung galaxy a50 now comparing this first wide shot of the three phones the realme 3 pro while seems to be closer to actual situation uh, the redmi note 7 pro is the one that has the closest image the realme 3 pro is slightly warm also the realme 3 pro is really saturated that is something that you will find especially the greens in this picture the redmi note 7 pro is also saturated but the realme 3 really pops out in an unnatural way with those greens now getting to 100% crop we can now different shade between the three the realme 3 pro's greens as we saw earlier is slightly more saturated than the redmi note 7 pro but the details are slightly more on the realme 3 as i can see if you look at corner to corner details and the separation in the smaller elements the redmi note 7 pro has done a great job uh, all in all if you also finally look at the wall while both of them have done over sharpening the redmi note 7 pro has a more appealing produce and hence the first daylight wide shot goes to the redmi note 7 pro but from that we come to the main standard wide shot that mr phone takes in all our camera comparison we love to analyze this one just because there are so many elements here the redmi note 7 pro has the most appealing produce here even without zooming in of course the color tone on the Samsung A50 are too muted and dark for some reason so much so that the image looks quite dull the Realme 3 Pro while has a lot of dynamics going on in the image it's too saturated Realme 3 Pro though has done a great job of getting details out of the shadows that is something you can see on the Redmi Note 7 Pro it's not happening that well there are too many dark areas but the Realme 3 Pro has done a phenomenal job here the dynamic range on all three phones is solid which is quite impressive and tells us how good smartphone cameras have become even in the budget section now let's get down to business 
As we get to 100% crop, the Realme 3 Pro seems to have slightly more details than the Redmi Note 7 Pro. It's only noticeable if you pixel peep, but it's there. It's also a higher resolution image on paper, which is why I think that happens. While the Realme 3 Pro has more details in some areas, the Redmi Note 7 Pro is quite uniform all through the image and you have details in almost every part of the image. Even if we look at the corner to corner details, we can see how the Redmi Note 7 Pro is slightly better. Also, the color tone, for example, this part where this barricade is Realme 3 Pro does a bad job with those yellow colors and the Redmi Note 7 Pro as you can see in comparison looks so much more elegant just because of the better colors the better details the more natural colors I think the Redmi Note 7 Pro takes this around for me followed by the Realme 3 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy A50 respectively before going to the HDR shot let's take a look at the before shots or the non HDR shots the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro both seem to have done a good job even without turning HDR on the Realme 3 Pro clearly is an improvement over the 2 Pro because we saw how that one had exposure and dynamic range issues. If you go and check out our previous camera comparisons with the 2 Pro, you'll find that, but the Realme 3 Pro has really improved upon that. The Samsung Galaxy A50 truly doesn't stand a chance among these two. Turning HDR on, the Redmi Note 7 Pro goes classic Xiaomi by actually bringing shadows also down along with the highlights. This way, I actually prefer the non-HDR shot from Xiaomi of the Redmi Note 7 Pro. The A50, surprisingly, also seems to be going the Xiaomi route for some reason and has gone even more dramatic on bringing almost everything in the image down. The Realme 3 Pro is not perfect either, though the highlights have been handled beautifully and while darker areas have been brought up, those areas also got a lot more saturated and I'm not a big fan of that, but considering the competition, the Realme 3 Pro easily takes this around. I think if the saturation in the HDR image can be reduced a bit, Realme 3 Pro can actually be a very capable camera for these situations. Now let's get some humans involved, shall we? Looking at this portrait mode shot right off the bat, I don't like the Realme 3 Pro shot. It's too red on the skin and that alone ruins it for me. The Redmi Note 7 Pro seems to have the most appealing produced with nice looking skin tones and enough details without even zooming in. A50 also actually takes a great picture. There are some dynamic range issues on the face but the tones are quite appealing and I would choose it over the Realme 3 Pro's red hot mess. Now we zoom in. Clearly, the Redmi Note 7 Pro looked to have more details because it does. The other two are just not in the competition. Realme has generally done a good job with skin tones and in portrait modes even in previous phones. So it's surprising that the image came out like this. One explanation could be that the portrait mode shots, because it also uses the secondary sensor and hence crops in during the shot, loses some details and paying messes with the color. Another one and a more plausible one in fact could be as Realme told us the software on the phone is not final and especially in the camera there are a lot of improvements that they'll be giving in the retail units that go out. That said the cutout on the Realme and the A50 are on par and better than the Redmi Note 7 Pro. But considering the whole picture, I go with the Redmi Note 7 Pro again, followed by the Samsung Galaxy A50 in fact, and the Realme 3 Pro respectively. Taking a look at these three selfies, I'm instantly drawn towards the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Not because it looks more detailed, because it doesn't. The Realme 3 Pro looks more detailed to me here, but the face tones are off and the contrast ratio is slightly higher than I'd like. The A50 is like a less detailed version of that. Zooming in, what we find is that the details on the Redmi Note 7 Pro are also much better and much more natural. The Realme 3 Pro does too much over sharpening. If you see around my neck, those creases are so much more natural and better on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Even the color of the shirt has been nailed by the Redmi Note 7 Pro. This is truly impressive because in previous comparisons, the Redmi Note 7 Pro did not have an impressive front camera. But after the software update, as Xiaomi claimed the camera performance, the selfie camera performance has indeed become better. Now, going to selfie portrait, this tells us a similar story. The cutout on the Redmi Note 7 Pro is beautiful. And the fact that with a single camera, it did a better cutout than its own back camera did is impressive. The Realme 3 Pro 2 does a great job. The Samsung Galaxy A50 still needs a little improvement. Since the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro have similar cutouts, it comes down to the subject and there the Redmi Note 7 Pro wins, hence taking this round. Taking low light selfie without flash, we have the Realme 3 Pro taking the best looking image primarily because it's the right balance of bright and crisp. The face tones are quite appealing as well. The A50 does the next best job and the Redmi Note 7 Pro 
follows. Now turning flash on, I instantly like the Redmi Note 7 Pro because of the slightly warmer face tone. There are different colors that suit different face tones. For mine, that warm tone suits a lot and hence the Redmi Note 7 Pro. The rest have also done a great job, but the A50 is too pink and the 3 Pro is slightly cooler than I'd like. Even the details on the Redmi Note 7 Pro are impressive and easily help it take this round. Between the Realme 3 Pro and the Samsung Galaxy A50, I choose the Realme because of the subtler face tone and better low light selfie. Now in this first low light shot, I don't think I have to defend the Samsung Galaxy A50, it's pretty bad. Let's compare between the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro, shall we? The Redmi and the Realme 3 Pro both have controlled the light around the Paper Fry Studio logo, as you can see. And if you zoom in, you can see that the Realme 3 Pro actually has much less noise and is cleaner compared to the Redmi Note 7 Pro. And this is even without turning the night mode on. I do prefer the color tone on the Realme 3 Pro and the cleaner image though the difference is tiny. Now turning the night mode on, while the Realme takes a subtler step, the Redmi Note 7 Pro produces a slightly more saturated image. That said, the colors on the Redmi Note 7 Pro just look too over-processed and there's this whole halo going around in the image. This is why I think I prefer the Realme 3 Pro's image. It might not be as sharp as the Redmi Note 7 Pro, but the colors have been handled very well. And I think in the complete picture, I prefer the Realme 3 Pro more than the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Now coming to videos, from the rear camera, first we took 1080p footages from all three phones. Now the footage on all three phones looks quite good, but the A50 clearly seems to have some dynamic range issues which you can clearly see on the face. Now looking at this footage, the Redmi Note 7 Pro instantly looks better because of the good stabilization and the good colors in the background. The Samsung Galaxy A50 also has great stabilization, but the colors are not really good and the face tones are clearly lacking. Also, the crop looks to be slightly more than the other two. The face tones on the Realme 3 Pro though are the ones that I'm the most fan of. I really like the colors on it. But that said, the stabilization is quite laggy and it just doesn't feel finished yet. So that probably could also be because the software is not final and we have more updates coming in. But that said, in this round with the 1080p footage, I'm gonna choose the Redmi Note 7 Pro for Followed by the Realme 3 Pro and then the Samsung Galaxy A50. This is Sri Hari from Mr. Phone and right now we are shooting rear camera footage from the Samsung Galaxy A50, the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro. And we can see what the stabilization is like, exposure is being handled, what the audio quality is like and if the color tones are right. Now in the last we take a look at 4K footage from the rear camera. The Samsung Galaxy A50 sadly does not shoot 4K which makes it easier to compare the two. Now, both these footages are pretty phenomenal because if you go and see even footages from flagships, the 4K footage has very bad reddish tone on the faces especially. These phones also do tend to do that, but the color tones are so much more controlled. The red is at least not very distracting. That said, the colors on the Realme 3 Pro are something I prefer a lot more and look much more natural compared to the Redmi Note 7 Pro. The stabilization is not there in either of these phones, but the inherent lens stabilization that there is looks better on the Realme 3 Pro, which is why the footage also looks smoother. So for this round, I'm going to choose the Realme 3 Pro and let the Redmi Note 7 Pro take the second spot. 30 FPS from the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 3 Pro. So as Nitesh is backtracking, you can see the light is right behind me, really bright day, shiny day. And how the exposure is being handled, what the audio quality is like, if there's any stabilization at 4K. In selfie video, all three phones have appealing face tones. The Samsung A50 looks slightly off, but it's still good footage. There's no stabilization, so no crop. Now notice when the light goes from behind me to falling on my face. While the Samsung Galaxy A50 actually changes the face tone considerably, the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro have done a phenomenal job at handling that. Now between these two, the audio is the real differentiator, which is much better on the Redmi Note 7 Pro, hence helping it take this round. Hey, this is Sri Arif from this phone and right now shooting front camera footage using the Redmi Note 7 Pro and the Realme 2 Pro and you can see as I'm panning around and the light is right behind me how the exposure is being handled and now I'll turn again around with light falling on my face and we can see how the face tones are changing and how the stabilization is as well as what the audio quality looks like. So now that we are done with the comparison, I'm pretty sure you know what the outcome is but just to give you a whole summary, the Redmi Note 7 Pro is still the best camera among these three phones. The Realme 3 Pro gave it a good competition, but the fact that the camera app is so much more mature, the way post-processing is done, the colors, the face tones, the lens quality, which makes sure that things like corner to corner details are in check, makes the Redmi Note 7 Pro still the best smartphone camera 
under 20,000, but that's overall. Also the fact that with a software update, a selfie camera that was below average a few weeks ago has actually gotten better to the point that it beats the Samsung Galaxy A50 and the Realme 3 Pro. It just ensures the fact that the Redmi Note 7 Pro is still the phone to go for if camera is your focus. That said, the Realme 3 Pro is nowhere behind. The pictures, as you saw, a lot of these pictures, you might actually prefer the Realme 3 Pro's image over the Redmi Note 7 Pro. When it came to close-up shots, the Realme 3 Pro actually did a good job. In most situations, the Realme 3 Pro and the Redmi Note 7 Pro were neck to neck and if I wasn't nitpicking them on my laptop for a detailed camera comparison, then it would have been very difficult to choose between the two. That said, the one situation where the Realme 3 Pro really shines is the low light performance. The low light performance, even without night mode on this thing is really good. And then add Nightscape to that, you get a really good low light performer in the Realme 3 Pro. If low light is very important to you, then easily get the Realme 3 Pro because even the daylight performance is arguably better on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. It's still not completely better on the Redmi Note 7 Pro. Then we come to the Samsung Galaxy A50, uh, which holds the last spot in this comparison. It is clearly not a phone for camera enthusiasts. It still has the most cameras of all three phones, but it's still not the best smartphone camera. So what we learned today here is that having more cameras does not mean that you have a better camera performance. And the fact that if you want a camera phone, then the Samsung Galaxy A50 does not make sense. But if you want a premium looking phone with premium software, then the A50 is the choice to go for. And with that, we come to an end of this camera comparison. Please let me know what you thought of this in the comment section below. Please let me know if you don't agree with anything that I said in this camera comparison. And I will be happy to talk to you about that because different people have different opinions. So it'll be very good to have a conversation with you in the comment section below. And with that, we come to an end. Thank you so much for watching. That's it for this one. This is Sri Hari from Mr. Phone and I'll catch you in the next one.